So it's three, two, one. We are live now, sir. You can start the session. Over to you. Hello. Yes, sir. We are live now. You can start the session. Uh, I cannot see the video. Uh, but sir, uh, your your view is visible, sir. Yeah, you can you can start. No, okay, okay. I can start. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Dr. Nitesh, a consultant urologist at Ford Hospital, Patna, and I own my clinic, Sri Kripa Eurocare. Today, I'll be talking on supine PCNL, how I do it, the tips, tricks, and the difficulties I faced. When we see PCNL, we see it as a treatment of choice for renal stones more than two centimeters. And the traditional position is prone for PCNL and it's favored by many urologists because it's familiar with the procedure. It's what we are trained with and what we are getting trained in the institutions because it, we, they, it provides a larger surface area for the choice of puncture site. And it's a potentially more direct approach. If anyone thought of a PCNL in the past, they would, thought, they would think from behind because kidney is behind. Nobody would have thought it from doing it from the front on from from the lateral side because it was in the posterior aspect so when we see the innovations in pcnl technique how the timeline changed in 1998 the supine pcnl was introduced and sequentially after supine pcnl was introduced we changed into e rirs the endoscopic guided access and when endoscopic guided access was introduced some gustis have tried endoscopic combined uh, intraanal surgery, the CBS, and we are also getting miniaturization of the scope from going from mini to micro. We are going into ultra mini and we are going tubeless to completely tubeless techniques. But the question will remain as because there's a miniaturization that's a different aspect. But the question to which position is best for the patient and still remains because there are lots of uh, position. Despite from prone, I've just uh, heard that you know, even in prone, somebody is putting bolster, somebody is not putting bolster, somebody is doing slightly tilted. And there's a belief, uh, thing that whatever suits them, they're doing it. And at the end of the day or at the end of the procedure, you are, have done a PCNL successfully only if you have removed the stone and the patient is stone free and there is no bleeding, there's a safe access, there's a safe exit and the patient is happy, you are happy. But my belief is the supine PCNL will become standard of care in around five to 10 years. When we see the supine positioning, the original position was by the DVS supine position. Then it was modified many times by Gladeco. And then there was Bart's techniques, the Bart's flank free supine position, the supine oblique, semi supine, completely supine left lateral flank position, modified complete supine position. After reading all these, I don't know what my exact position is, how to define that position, but let's pay tribute to Valadivia sir, which has introduced the supine PCNL. In his position, a three liter sac is placed in the right uh, lumbar fossa and it's <clears throat> the patient lies completely supine, the legs are completely extended. When it was uh, modified, the legs were slightly put apart so that endoscopic access also could be possible. Dr. Gusti modified this technique. He put a roll in the back of the patient completely from the shoulder to the buttocks and the legs, one leg was, the lateral leg was kept uh, completely extended and the contralateral leg was put placed in a lithotomy position for a combined access. And he's doing a very nice job with the SABS. In Bart's flank free position, the flanks are free. The bolsters are kept uh, in the buttocks and on the chest and flank is elevated, it hangs down. And the patient is in lithotomy position, the legs are slightly extended on the side and contralateral side slightly abducted and flexed. So <coughs> I will not go into the details, why supine and not prone and what are the advantages of one over the other because it has been talked a lot of times. Rather I will put forth my journey from prone to supine PCNLs, the challenges I faced, 
how I adapted them, and the several other advantages which I've discovered in Supine PCNL. So, <clears throat> how I started Supine, my initial case selection. I remember my journey when I was a resident. I've done around, uh, after doing around 100 PCNLs, I was almost uh, okay, let's do something new. So, something new what came up in our mind because there was no lasers, no RIS available. So we wanted to do something new. So we thought we'll do supine PCNL. Every day when the PCNL was posted in the OT, we'll go to our assistant person and we'll ask, sir, today we'll try supine position. And he'll say, no, no, dilatation is not that much. We'll wait for a case which has uh, much more dilatation. Uh, the same thing kept going over, over, over. And almost after two months, we got a case in which the kidney was baggy and there was a small stone sitting in the pelvis. So he gave up uh, his thumbs up. Okay, you can go for supine in that case. And that was the first time we did it. I've done around uh, three, four cases in my residency. After I came in my practice and uh, I started my private practice, I started selecting cases earlier, which were uh, small stones stones in the pelvis in which uh, I could puncture any calyx I want and uh, there's uh, no need to pu puncture a different calyx. So we started like that and uh, gradually there was one stone in which uh, the stone was in pelvis but during breaking it went into the upper pole and I could not uh, retrieve the stone. The patient was in spinal. By the time I turned him, he was almost uh, the effect was gone and I could not do it in the same setting. So I had to repeat, uh, redo the case. So that was an initial hiccup. I was afraid to go into the upper pole or the patient in which upper pole puncture was required. But gradually, as I adapted the technique, I knew the difficulties I faced. I knew the challenges and I adapted to them. Then I gradually went to going for a superior calicial puncture and then to complete staghorns and even to the other things which has multiple stones in a kidney which requires multiple punctures and I'm doing all my cases in supine and uh, recently I've completed around 200 cases in supine PCM. So we'll start with the first thing the positioning and setup and the anesthesia. The patient my patient position is <coughs> patient lies uh, supine uh, in the bed and uh, there's a small roll almost around a uh, half thickness of the NS bottle which you can see on the shoulders and <clears throat> the small roll is kept on the be below the buttock and a small 500 ml NS bottle is kept below the shoulder and so hands are slightly or hands are kept on the chest. This is the position I keep and anesthesia is almost uh, always supine and if a if the procedure goes long, uh, anesthetist is very happy to proceed with or uh, supplement with TBA or if needed, he can go directly to the GA. He has a good access. He is happy with that. The patient, his head also turns to the opposite side and then <clears throat> he can watch the procedure. He is less tensed. His movements are less uh, jerky, his respiratory movements. And... You can see in this, the contralateral leg is placed in a supine, uh, abducted and lithotomy position. The ipsilateral leg is placed on a stirrup. I'm planning to put the leg straight, but I'm not getting that uh, parting table or the, it's not uh, easily available. And uh, in all hospitals or some freelance hospitals, it's not available. So I modified uh, to this. I modified to this. I keep the roll, one roll on the below the buttock and one small NS bottle on the just below the scapula. That's it. Nothing else. When you see the OT setup, <clears throat> when you see the OT setup, this uh, CM is in the center. The TV screen is on the left side and the CM screen is on the right side. So I have equal access to all these uh, both the screens the cm is almost in a fixed position once it's fixed the paddle will paddle will lie on the left foot of the cm i can control the cm i do not need an assistant to repeatedly press the cm so one person is less in the ot 
and there's a less chaos, less uh, exposure or less man force needed. The litho button or the this uh, paddle or the laser paddle will lie on my right hand. On my uh, right side, or uh, you can say if I'm doing the left side on my left side, there will be the trolley. So I can, I take usually a rotating chair, I could rotate and take things from there. So after you place the uh, patient in, a, I call it a, a flank free semi-oblique modified lithotomy position, but I'm not sure the others, uh, it's almost different from every other surgeons I am doing, seeing the supine position slightly different and whatever suits you, it's it's the best. Even prone, if suits you, if you are able to do stone clearance in prone, prone is better for you. But putting the electric catheter after that, it just patient is in lithotomy position, you just go with the same nephroscope, you put a uh, electric catheter and just keep the instrument on the patient uh, body or you can just dismantle it and keep it uh, on the tray and just you can uh, rotate you have to come back to the patient side that's it your 10 minutes of flipping the patient and re-draping or even 15 20 minutes the patient is hefty you'll need two to three persons it's gone once my ot is set up i only need two persons inside the ot and uh, there's no need of other persons you go there you keep the erectic catheter in your hand because it will be available to you. You do your RGP, your foot pedal is in your control. The exposure is minimized. After that, you do a puncture. In puncture, the initial problem which we face is an orientation. That we tend to go down below the... This is the marking which uh, we do usually, the 11, 3, and 12, 3, when the mid axillary line. I usually do not mark uh, in any of the cases. I just marked it uh, for taking the picture or for demonstration. Just to see the highest point of iliac crest and that's it. That's the posterior axillary line. You have to be behind it. So when we start puncturing, we usually do not go straight. We go down as we go in a prone position. So this is the habit we need to change. And you have to go either parallel to the skin or if you, your puncture site is slightly below or away from the posterior axillary line or parallel to the flow or if your puncture is slightly below, you need to go slightly cephalic. Okay. So this is the first mistake we do and it needs correction. It will come by practice. No need. You can uh, try supine if it doesn't work for you. You can always flip the patient. There's a chance. You can always complete your procedure. But do not take up initially for the big stones because flipping everything will cost you time and it will be a problematic affair. So regarding the puncture, the puncture always it's said it's nothing new for a supine or a prone puncture. That puncture should be on the tip of the calyx or uh, that it should be centered going through the calyx, not through the infundibulum. The guide wire should go nicely. All the things we are not going to repeat that. The only thing after puncture, one more thing which reduces your time is you do not need a syringe. You do not need to aspirate. Urine will come. If urine is not coming, your puncture is not inside. You're not inside in supine PCN. That's a you can make it as a dictum. If urine is coming or if water is coming, you are inside. If it's not, you're not inside. <clears throat> one more thing in puncture, we are mostly taught the triangulation technique and the this uh, bullseye technique but in supine pcnl if you want to do supine pcnl you have to get accustomed or you have to get very confident with a free hand puncture technique because triangulation it's difficult job in supine again you will need a third person to do 0 30 or cephalat 30 or uh, 0 or uh, the quarter 30 or <coughs> you need a uh, for a bullseye you need to see arm to be almost uh, horizontal, that C should be under the table or even above the table and you need to stay away. I've seen, I forgot his name, uh, surgeon, urologist from Korea doing like this. He keeps the uh, C arm, C below the table and he'll hold, a, hold the needle with a 
artery force and musculoskeletal forceps up, put up both side and then we will puncture as puncture is good technique is good but we will need this <coughs> extra persons and extra time so if you are habituated if you are expert in free hand guided technique you can do it by the time by the experience you will know i you, whether you are anterior to the kidney or posterior to the kidney contrary to the cis prone pcnl kidney rotates more kidney is more freely mobile in supine pcnl so if suppose you are going anteriorly so kidney will move in a different fashion the calyces will get oriented in a different fashion and if you are behind more behind this will get oriented in a different fashion so you need to adjust accordingly and the time most of the time around 90% of the time i go inside in a first go 10% it takes around uh, 2 to 3 puncture attempt usually i will go in in a first attempt so after uh, puncture putting is the guide wire the putting the guide wire is almost the same what i do a different thing i put whole length of guide wire inside i try to if doesn't go it's a different issue but i try to keep the tail of the guide wire to a minimum almost about uh, a half a meter because i do not need to take the help of my assistant so that he will put uh, this uh, every instrument will thread it from a different distance and then his guide the guide wire is in his control and sometimes he will pull it off and do something else it's a difficult scenario in that time so i'll keep the tail to minimum and it just standing between me and the patient and everything is easy everything goes inside smoothly and you can do it so dilatation of the tract is easy <coughs> uh this is a mini pcnl dilatation so you need to dilate always under dilate it's almost a common issue i'm just uh, telling the differences what i do uh, differently uh during dilatation one more issue you will face in supine pcnl is a movement of the kidney you can see on the left video the the moment i try to dilate the moment i try to push this uh, kidney is getting pushed and it's not going inside so it's a problem so how to counteract this problem you can just press your hand on the abdomen for a brief moment and just thread it it will go inside because the kidney is stabilized it will not go opposite side and one more thing i wanted to tell that uh, the rotation of the patient you can see that erectile character calyces all are lateral to the spine it's not overlap so you not you will not miss a stone in my position if many have seen uh, turning slightly more in upper calyceal puncture i also usually turn the patient slightly more but once you turn the patient slightly more or almost like a semi lateral position or even a exaggerated in say elevated trunk upper trunk so everything will get rotated and these things will overlap on the supine on the spine and you will miss the stone small stone fragment because you cannot differentiate from a bone density from a uh, stone density from a bone density so uh, as i was saying about the guide wire you can see in the second video I've kept the tail so short and I, the tree is beside me everything is accessible to me and i can go in easily i can just rotate rock my chair on the opposite side this side or this side with whichever side i have kept the things and you can just keep it see my assistant is just standing there and watching the procedure the patient is also watching the procedure and i am free i am i do not get uh, distracted or I, he cannot make mistakes i can make everything the things mistakes will be made it will be mine only but uh, interference of the other person will be less so after that starting from a small stones and uh, these things i went on to go for supine pcnl for all the cases in this case uh, there was a bifid system i could not put the picture the upper stone was in a different uh, calyx and uh, different uh, bifid uh, this pelvis and the lower stones were in a different system i could see three tracts three tracts were made in supine and uh, all stones were cleared so if multiple tracts are also required it's not a, not a problem in a supine position and usually uh, many others have taught or uh, our teachers or seniors are teaching that 
you initially puncture whatever you need to, to puncture put place the guide wire guide wire and then uh, do the procedure but for me i feel more comfortable without the puncturing initially all the tracks which i require and each, sometimes i feel that i require two tracks but it gets completed in a single track sometimes i feel that i require uh, one track but it uh, will take around three or even four tracks so i puncture as and when needed it's uh, not a issue for me and you can see in the third picture that uh, a foley catheter has been kept in the track and what i do is clamp this foley and inflate the bulb for around 2 to 3 cc then again the system will be completely closed you can do rgp can puncture and another advantage of uh, puncturing at that moment is kidney is stable and you know the direction of the puncture needle or the direction of the track the other tracks also should be parallel to that so not make much mistakes in going or finding the different calluses about the supra question of the last bit on the about the supra question the upper track the uh, upper catheter this is uh, upper stone was a different uh, system by the system to break a little puncture it was the uh, supra 11th probably the supra 11th puncture it was uh, done nicely you can see in the second picture also the superior calyx puncture and then multiple stones and other calyces but it was clear and the video uh, superior calyceal puncture and uh, fragmentation of the stone has been seen you can see the superior calyceal puncture by the direction of my nephroscope because it's going down okay. so it's uh, a much comfortable puncture or dilatation for any axis of the either middle or lower pole and you can see the punctures all are in the tip of the papilla uh one more thing i was uh, worried about initially that whether i will be able to go to upper pole after puncturing the lower pole or not whether i will go to lower pole or mid pole after puncturing other poles or not but in this uh, and many other cases also you can see even i can go to the mid pole after puncturing the lower pole my mobility is more because the kidney is free and it will turn the suppose uh, i am i have entered to the lower pole and i want to go to upper pole do not expect that it will be like this when you rotate your system the kidney will move like this and then upper calyx will be uh, straight to, to your orientation if you move more you can also enter the middle calyces and uh, there is a uh, contrary to the belief the smaller the scope more the maneuverability i have seen i could uh, reach the stones in the middle calyces with a mini nephroscope which i could not reach with a standard nephroscope or the 20 french nephroscope which i use you can see in the cm i can go to the lower pole or ureter i can go to the upper pole it's not much problem <clears throat> one more thing i forgot to mention that uh, during dilatation you cannot see the guide rod what i've done is uh, i've cut my guide rod just about uh, I was six uh, centimeters longer than the amplar's length, so it's comfortable because if you keep a longer guide rod, it is almost here for you to dilate. And there's a your working environment is a distance between you and the patient. It's not like a prone position that will get all the air of the until the roof or until your CM or until your this OT lights. will get just that much space only because you, then you have to rock back and forth rock back and forth and then create sometimes problem if it is long if you are uh, dilating slightly cephalate then you have to bend it like this so keep uh, modify the guide rod keep it slightly short or cut it according to your uh, comfortable <coughs> length actually it was blessing in disguise the uh, the supplier which provided me he has provided me this short one i have started using this short one i was very happy with it because <clears throat> that long guide rod was creating much more problems so moving to the lithotripsy yeah you can see 
the pneumatic lithotripsy, you can see the laser lithotripsy and uh, you can see once I come out, the stones will gradually come out. Water is almost coming out every time, there is a low pressure system and the system is low pressure and the stones will come out automatically. There is very less need of the glass part and I use it only sometimes because uh, I do not want to fragment my weight here and there and most of the time I will fragment the stones uh, small. I do not uh, worry about the movement of the fragment. You can see in the first picture it is uh, breaking and it is coming out. It is breaking and it is coming out. We do not need to grab all the fragments and take it out repeatedly. It will come out on its own. Very few times will require use of the grasper. So the procedure also is fast. Uh, the problem arises in uh, lithotripsy when the lithotripter rod is uh, slightly longer. So the advantage which uh, is there of cutting that uh, guide rod, it's lost in lithotripter. Because again, you have to come back and then sometimes there's a direction is like this. It's uh, in between your body and your the patient. So you cannot uh, take it out. So you have to slide back or then rotate, then you have to take it out. But if you have a good rotating chair, it's very comfortable. You can just turn to this side and you can remove the uh, lithotripter rod or the rod or you can just then insert your grasper. Grasper is also slightly longer. Sometimes we will face problems when you have anterior calluses, then for uh, you have to bend down and then slightly go there. But it's very rare and uh, do not require in so many circumstances. One more problem is what I faced is I get drenched in water because uh, the water will continuously flow out. The water requirement is slightly more and uh, the water will follow the course and water will follow the course of my nephroscope. It will come from the nephroscope to my hands and it will go on seeping, seeping, seeping here. So I need a waterproof gown or a protection. I usually use that and then it will form the water inlet also. It will continue dripping. This dripping of water, this uh, the fourth picture, the water which is dripping down from the scope. You can see the water is running around my. You can see when I. Hello. You have stopped screen sharing, sir. You need to share your screen again. Okay, so wait. Am I disconnected? Oh, you are there on the platform. Okay, okay. So just I will, I will share the screen. I do not know something happened. It's coming? Yeah, it's visible. Visible. Yeah. Better. Yeah, you can see in the last picture as soon as I go. As I go, the water will start dripping and come across my hand. It will come off. As the second place from where water will come off is the inlet channel of the water that you are set. It will follow its track and hangs down, it makes a sea loop. And from that sea loop, it will continue dripping on your body, on, on the floor. The so floor becomes slightly messy and with adapting this. Uh, Still adapting how to minimize this. I have been using, you can see that I have been using plastic drapes, I have been using PCNL drapes. PCNL drape helps quite a lot, but the drapes are not waterproof, and again, the water will drip off uh, from here and there. I have started using that uh, floor suction mop, it uh, sucks the water very nicely, so it's uh, very efficient. And I've started wearing this. Uh, waterproof uh, lowers and boots so it's quite helpful and uh, this small disadvantage it's much more advantageous for all the other things so i keep doing supine uh, after that when 
it we clear the stone it comes to placement of the dj stand sometimes every one of us have faced this issue that we are placing the dj stand it's not going it's not going because there's a kink in the ureter it's not going because there's a small stone fragment which has lost into the ureter it's not going because uh, we cannot find the puj it's so much edema or something like that so you need to flip the patient and then again you need to go from below and again the stent is not going you will toil hard you will take around a half an hour maybe sometimes one hour also some i have faced the issue that stent will not go and then you are uh, you have lost the track from above you have lost the track from below and become sometimes messy to just come out to the patient you and many of the times after flipping the patient again stent will go but it will take time so one more advantage is if there is a slight hesitancy or slight disturbance in putting the stent from above or many a times what happens you place the stent from above again it will require slight maneuvering repositioning to confirm that uh, the upper coil is nicely set so you can just after finishing the procedure keep the sheath there just come over to the uh, come over between the legs and place the stent from below you can also do this sometimes uh, i did uh, on 2 cm stone in the pelvis and small fragment got lost in the pelvis the guide wire is not going from below again i have to take urs from the guide wire was not going from above so stent also could not go i have to come back and then uh, do like a push back piece and I'll do a urs and then with difficulty stent went but because both the approaches were available to me so i could do it easily so after putting a stent you need to come out the exit strategy should be there and uh, you can see the first picture it's nice it's coming out from nice calicial top okay and the second picture also is slight bleeding but it's also coming from a nice calicial top so you can confirm that the puncture is uh, good and you can see that bleeding will stop and the moment you come out mostly the bleeding will stop and you come out keep seeing the track keep seeing whether you have entered the colon or not or any other organ you can see nicely recognize that uh, the gerotas have come the dorsal lumbar fascia you have come out you have come out of the muscles you have come out of the sheath now you are in subcutaneous fat and ultimately you are out of the skin this is a very fat patient so it took time to take up the video also after coming what my strategy is once i come out uh, many of the times i do not uh, if i anticipate that the procedure is going to get over in within an hour i do not place police from below only there is a electric catheter because uh, many a times i need to, to go from be below and to put a stent and also sometimes uh, because my i leave the cm to me only and i keep the cm in a fixed position once fixed it doesn't move for a dilatation or for anything because it covers the whole area of my interest and sometimes you need to move it but most of the time it covers my area of the interest and it do not need to be moved sometimes coming from above to see the lower coil of the dj stent it's difficult sometimes and uh, i've seen few cases in which what happens it when you have a folis in situ uh, you will because folis will rest above the ureteric orifices in many times or many situations so when you pass the guide wire guide wire will go from there and it will guide wire instead of uh, coiling in the bladder sometimes it goes directly into the urethra you place a stent and the stent distal end is in urethra again you have to flip the patient you have to push it sometimes by pushing the folis or uh, just removing the folis putting some jelly reinserting the folis it goes in but sometimes you can accidentally pull out the stent also so i do not uh, usually put uh, this put my folis in at the outset if uh, the anticip anticipated procedure the time is less than 1 hour and uh, uh, many a times i will confirm my stent position the lower coil directly by doing a cystoscopy it hardly takes it takes much less time than repositioning the cm to the pelvis so after you come out and there are small holes in mini pcnls or there can be three or four holes 
if you have multiple tracks you can see the three tracks the first track was biggest second was smallest and third was much smaller i usually go to the smaller ones for a smaller calculus you can see uh, the first uh, image uh, electric actor has been pushed the mini pc channel it's almost hardly around 5 mm and uh, i usually put a stapler in sometimes when stapler is not available i will go on with the sutures and the next day i discharge my patient if something happens or there is some delay they will go on the uh, day after when so uh, the on the second day and i remove i'll remove the stapler on the that day only on the day of discharge so that do not do not forget and just put a bandaid or hands up plast on that i'll ask the patient that they can uh, this uh, take part daily and they can remove the step this bandaid and reapply it again if they are afraid of the infection or if they are afraid that it will pain after 15 days uh, the patient cannot To, it's difficult to find the scar it's just a dimple so this advantage one more added advantage to this supine pcnl is that you can do ecris i'm working alone in my hospital so there's uh, no other surgeon available who can do a simultaneous urs so i have to move back and forth from to lithotomy to supine position or from lateral side of the patient to lithotomy or in between the legs so you can see in this patient it was a redo case actually it was full of stones i could uh, clear all the stones but three stones were in a different calyces i could not uh, clear it so i thought of combined technique i cleared one stone with uh, pcnl and uh, the second stone which was very difficult to access and uh, puncture also last time there was bleeding finding that stone so i did not wanted to take any risk i could go with a flexible nephroscope and with the flexible nephroscope the patient is pre stented the patient was pre stented so i could go on from below if the patient is not pre stented and you want a small calyx which is not you can see the stone but you're not able to reach it or you can uh, you cannot reach from that puncture is very small stone you do not want any extra puncture you can directly go from a pcnl tract also and you can search all the calyces you can search the stone and there's a minimized trauma to the kidney so the combined technique also is helpful and this technique you can see uh, through the pcnl tract you can see my flexible ureteroscope that was searching for the stone so in upper ureteric this uh, ureteric calculus also we face uh, difficulties that we push the stone we flip the patient we go in and we found that the stone is way too far in the ureter it has moved uh, down and sometimes you are trying to push the stone or trying to reach the stone you are not going to the stone because there is a king and you you are not able to see the stone you are not able to pass the guide you are not able to reach it so what you do is in desperation okay i will flip the patient i will try to puncture and try to reach from above and at that time also you do not succeed so when there is a combined approach you can uh, yeah, puncture the kidney and after puncturing when we just press the amplas or uh, your sheath downwards the kidney will get move up and the kink will straighten and you can pass the guide wire from below it's very helpful and once you pass the guide wire you can just retrieve it your uh, access is complete and then you can manipulate from both the sides and most of the time you will be able to clear that impacted upper ureteric calculus even if some stone fragments migrate or some stone fragments uh, are still there then you can always you have option to go back to the lithotomy or go back in between the legs so that was it uh, i have told you about all the problems i faced what i did and what i am doing the next plan is ultrasound guided supine pcnl am uh, i have done many ultrasound guided pcn in when in supine but uh, pcnl this the next plan i will i want to do I, most probably i will do when there is a meta analysis between prone versus supine 
many uh, meta analysis have uh, said this is a less stone less operative time the similar stone free rate and mostly they have said that this is better in supine in high risk patient and multiple calicial stone i will not go into the details of the study so given the benefits of the supine modified supine position for surgical and anesthetic team particularly in the obese patient group it should be considered by all the surgeons performing supine pcnl so sorry so my thought that supine pcnl is the way to go and only a blind and not for seeing osteoarthritis can prevent you the experience the clear advantage of the supine position no more excuses try supine position and, and you will love it i say that you will love it i am loving it because you can cut almost your one hour i have done around 2 cm stone from gloves into gloves out within 25 minutes also and everything goes smoothly so my thought is that prone pcnl should take the occasional job and supine pcnl should be the standard of care thank you thank you very much sir. thank you very much sir. thank you for your uh, wonderful slides so uh, till now we are not have any questions but can you wait for one to two minutes more for the delegates if there's any questions comes yeah if there are any questions i'm um, you can uh, tell me then forward it to me yes sir hello yes sir tell me yeah are there any questions or uh, i can wrap up no sir still there are no questions so with your permission sir we can hello can you hear me hello yeah 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 tell me yeah i'm uh, i'm uh, asking uh, still there are not any questions so with your permission shall we conclude hello am i audible hello yeah you are audible to me but you are talking to the team i, I think so yeah i'm i'm asking to you sir but there are no other questions still now so with your permission shall we conclude hello hello it is sir can you yeah yeah so yeah i can your, with your permission shall we conclude sir there are no other questions yeah yeah we can conclude okay thank you very much thank you for thank your very good time no uh, on the behalf of organizer i would uh, like to thank you for your insightful and uh, informative talk thank you very much sir. thank you yeah. bye